Hello crafty friends, welcome to another everyday inspiration card making video. Today I'm going to make this card for you and it was inspired by my newest favourite mug. I bought this mug recently, I think it was TK Maxx and I just love that deep indigo colour with the white marks along the top. So I thought I'd try and recreate that in a card. So I've got a piece of mixed media paper here and I'm giving it a really liberal application of chipped sapphire distress oxide. I'm not looking for a completely solid colour because my mug has a fairly speckled appearance I think so I want lots of blue but I'm quite happy with having some white paper peeking through the blue ink. Next, I squirted or misted really on some water to increase the speckled appearance. So I did a couple of fine mist squirts with my water bottle, left it for a few seconds and then rolled a kitchen towel over it to pick up the water. Off camera, I gave this a good drying with my hair dryer because what I wanted to do next was heat embossing and I didn't want any ink to still be wet because then you get random bits of embossing powder sticking where you don't want it. Next, I chopped my blue background into four pieces because I wanted to do four little experiments trying different ways to add the white marks. So the first way is to stencil on some embossing ink and then emboss with white embossing powder. When I was thinking of how I could make these marks, this stencil jumped out at me because although they're wider marks than on the mug, they do have that same kind of vibe. I only wanted to do three rows because I wanted to keep some of the blue background unmarked like the mug. Once I poured the embossing powder over the inked area I set it aside so that I could do all my heat embossing in one go because my next experiment was stamping and heat embossing. So I found this mixed media mark stamp in my stash, stamped it on in embossing ink, poured over the embossing powder and as I say, set it aside for later. Experiment number three was to use an embossing ink pen and hand draw the marks myself. I then poured embossing powder over the top and took the three panels that I had added embossing powder to and heated them with my heat tool to see what they looked like finished. My fourth experiment was to use a paint pen, an acrylic paint pen to hand draw the marks. So I've got this white Crawford and Black paint pen. I knew starting out that the white acrylic ink would absorb some of the blue ink from the paper and tint blue. So once the first layer of marks was dry, I added a second and then a third layer. And once I finished that, I remembered I had some bleed proof white ink. So I thought I'd give that a go to see how blue the white ink would tint. So I popped some on my glass mat, added a little bit of water and took a paintbrush. The white marks did absorb some of the blue. So I could have done a second coat or I could have done a few marks given them a blast with my hair dryer and then done a few more marks and dried them and then a few more marks and dried them so that the bleed proof ink didn't have a chance to pick up much of the blue. So here are all five of my experiments. My favourites I think are the bleed proof ink and the stamping for this particular design. I think they gave me the most similar vibe to the mug. In the end, I decided to use the stamping on my card today because it had all that blue beneath it. I'd obviously done experiment five on the same piece as experiment four, so I couldn't use that one. 
So all I did was chop that little blue rectangle down a little bit so that I could mount it on a piece of white cardstock and then add it to the front of a four by six inch card blank. I then used high tack glue to stick the panel down in the bottom half of my card blank. Initially, I was going to use it with the marks at the top of the panel but as I was about to stick it down I thought actually no I want to use it the other way up because of that little gap that I left when I stamped I thought that would look best on the left hand side and I could add my focal point over that gap for my focal point, I die cut a branch out of white cardstock. I then popped it on my grip mat and used a finger dauber to add a light blush of the chipped sapphire, making sure to catch the embossed texture. I then stuck that onto another branch that I'd cut from vellum and then I added that to my card panel as I say over that gap in the stamping. I do apologise if you can hear beeping in the background that is my pet frogs. It is still mating season so they are still shouting at each other. For my sentiment, I chose a stamp that said a little something, so this card can be used for pretty much any occasion, I think. I stamped it on white cardstock, cut it out with a stitched rectangle die, and then I felt that the card needed a little something extra. I asked my daughter, what should I add? And she said, silver dots. So I used one of my wobbly circle dies to cut out some dots from silver foiled cardstock and I added these around my focal point to bring in a bit more energy. And that's this card done. I do hope you've enjoyed the video and that my little experiments have given you some ideas of how you could translate some of your everyday inspiration into something you can add to a card. Right, thanks for watching and I will see you very soon. Bye for now.